the Peugeot RCZ, spearheading the French manufacturer's sporty identity for quite some time now, and this latest iteration has had a bit of a facelift, so it's looking fresher than ever. Now, I've got a pal who works at a Peugeot dealership, and I was speaking to him about this car before doing the road test, and he was telling me the amount of conquest business that the RCZ takes off the Audi TT is quite unbelievable, and certainly, at a glance from the outside anyway, it's not hard to understand as to why that may be. So, let's take a closer look. If this new front-end design looks a little familiar, it is probably because you've seen it on the 208 or 107 siblings, as Peugeot has introduced this new look across its entire range. Now, if you have got such a good-looking car as the RCZ, then you want to make sure that everybody knows you've got one. So you do want to be driving it to work, you want to be taking it to the golf course, you want to be going round to the in-laws with it at the weekend. But there's a downside to sports cars, because you can't do that with such a small boot. But with the RCZ, you can. There's around 350 litres of boot space available, and if you can't get all your gubbins in the back of here, you can pull this little red handle, and it'll allow you to fold the rear bench down. I say bench because there's two very small seats in the back, but we'll get to that in a little while. But nevertheless, it's good to know that you've got plenty of space to get all your stuff in here. The RCZ still has plenty to offer on its two trim levels, which are aptly named Sport and GT. Entry level features of the Sport trim include climate control, cruise control, sport seats and parking sensors, so it's pretty packed. The GT trim adds stylish tweaks like leather upholstery, which even features on the RCZ's doors. The interior of the RCZ is a very comfortable place to be. The materials and the fabrics used are very premium indeed, and it only enhances the car's sporty vibe. Especially with the seating position, you feel as though you're almost sat on the floor, so it certainly does feel sporty before you even get out on the road. Now let's just give you a little tour of the cockpit. We've got plenty of storage around the cabin, which is very useful. We've got a centre storage here, which also houses our auxiliary input and iPod connectivity. We've got a cup holder here, which you can't really fit a cup in, but it's still there. We've got a little bit of insert in the dashboard there that you could probably get a piece of chewing gum in. There's a button here, which releases the spoiler. It raises the spoiler up on the back. We've got a 12 volt adapter got our gear shifter. We've got some more storage here, all our climate control, and let me just turn the engine on so we can see what our dials are like. So the LCD backlit displays, which are fairly nice. Another little bit of storage here, CD player, our SOS button. If you are unfortunate enough to be in an accident, then you can push this and it'll call the emergency services for you. We've also got the Peugeot alert button as well, which will call Peugeot for you if you have any servicing issues or problems such as this. We've got a nice little analog clock on the dashboard, which is, again, quite premium, and you see this in some quite high-end manufacturers, so I, I do like that touch. There's no denying that the RCZ looks the part, with its double bubble roof and mean-looking front end headlining the car's appeal. Its interior is also fairly well kitted out. We give its appeal four out of five stars. And the double bubble also provides plenty of headroom. Now I'm quite tall, six foot plus, and I'm very comfortable indeed. To find comfort in this driving seat isn't difficult whatsoever. The same may not go for the people behind the back because this may be a little bit tricky to show you because there's so little space. But if I pull the seat forward, our camera can hopefully see in there, and there's virtually no space whatsoever. But this is a sports car, so the fact that there's two available seats there anyway is a bonus. So I'm not really complaining about this, but it is worth just demonstrating that you would certainly struggle to get two adults in the back. But nevertheless, who cares? Let's take it out on the road. Practicality-wise, the Peugeot RCZ is a little bit of a funny one. Yes, it has a massive boot, but you pay for it in the back, meaning you may as well consider it a two-seater. We give its practicality three and a half out of the five available stars. The Peugeot RCZ performs well, combining good performance and good ride comfort. Two versions of the 1.6 litre petrol engines can be spec'd with either 156 bhp or 200 brake horsepower outputs. Now I'm driving the 1.6 litre diesel which has got 163 brake horsepower and it averages around 50 miles per gallon so the power's on tap but you're not going to have to keep filling up. 
A good variety of engines are available, the 1.6 litre diesel variant being the highlight of the range. We give its performance category 3.5 out of 5 available stars. With the RCZ you really do feel like you're sat on the road because of its low driving position, which may deter some drivers. For optimum comfort, choose the smallest wheels on offer, or you will get a distorted ride and you'll have to get very used to dodging potholes. One thing that I do love about this car is that you can use it for many different things. The daily commute you'll be able to tackle with ease, it's a comfortable car. The suspension's quite firm but not overly firm, it's a relatively comfortable drive. The steering is very accurate and precise and not too, not too soft. So for me it's a perfect balance of a little bit of fun at the weekend but also a good all-rounder, there's plenty of space and most importantly it's a great looker. The ride and handling of the RCZ is by no means bad, it's smooth, agile and feels like a true sports coupe. We give its ride and handling category 3.5 stars. When it comes to owning a Peugeot RCZ, there are obvious fun factor perks of it being a coupe. However, this has adverse effects on practicality and general usability of the car, especially blind spots. On the upside, the RCZ comes with a good range of petrol and diesel engines, but it isn't cheap though, and comes in at around £22,000. If you opt for the diesel engine, then the running costs will be as competitive as a family hatch. We give its ownership category 4 stars. If you're looking for a coupe that looks the part and is well equipped, the Peugeot RCZ is great, but in terms of driving dynamics, you may want to consider the Audi TT. Overall, the Peugeot receives a 4 out of 5 star rating. If you've got any thoughts on this vehicle, then leave them in the comments box below. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and all the other social media.